Sorry about that. Camera cut out. Uh, but here it is. See that wood? How it's really contrasting grains. And just a beautiful golden brown finish. Yeah, you can see uh, this is the area where I normally start to get on the belt. And then after that, it'll be straight. So, one day I'll get better so you know, it doesn't happen don't have to have the spot here. But you can see that actually with a lot of the knife makers uh, that either they get on the belt from the tip or from here and you can see it's a bit uneven there but then it straightens out after. It's funny too because uh, this this blade here the blade should have been a bit longer here but you can tell by this area that I got on. Sorry about that UPS truck. But this area that I got on got ground a bit more, so you can see that. This is uh, pretty common because uh, when you get on the belt, that it, you're at a different angle when you get on. And that's why you see a lot of people convert their knives into recurves when they intentionally meant for it to be straight. At. So yeah. Uh, I think that's it. So here's a quick... Uh, Overview of the knives. I really like this olive wood. A real uh, different look to it. Focus. Most of these scales are also book match, so you can see the grain continue on the other side. There we go. I also got a sanding drum for my drill press, so I can now square everything up. So that's why it looks a lot more even at the head. If you look at some of my, before I got it, like on this knife from the batch ago, you can see how it's kind of crooked there. So now I can square it up so it's nice and even. Um, I actually don't mind it being crooked. I mean, it's something that you've, something handmade, something you've made, and a little bit of your character into it. I mean, if it's just perfect, you might as well have a machine make it. See how the wood, the, the wood grain lines up. And yeah, just this really high polish actually provides a really good grip, dry, but when it's wet, uh, just, <laughs> I wouldn't use your knife too hard if it's wet, but you can see there. I've also been practicing with the new finish. Instead of using true oil, I'm using uh, wax. So just, uh, I think Tim showed us how to do that in the build Sugar Creek Forge build along. You just heat up the wood and the wax with a heat gun and let the wax melt in and then buff it off. It's a bit of a less glossy finish, but I mean, it's still really beautiful. Also, uh, I found a new way to straighten the steel for heat treating. Uh, maybe make a video on that, just because I struggled with that a lot. Um, not any fancy tools, just a bench vise you can straighten out. 
knives fairly easily. Uh, especially when I ordered steel from USA Knife Maker or New Jersey Steel Baron if the steel came bent. It was kind of hosed because I didn't know what to do. I tried uh, just flattening by bending it by hand and using the edge of a table. Didn't work out too well for me, so I'll show that in a bit. Actually, I could show that now. So if we go into the garage. So here's my bench vise. So what you'd do is you would grab, oh, where is it? I'll just use this as an analog. I have three dowels that I use that I would just tape, or let me open this up a bit more. You tape one, or one here, one here, and one here, just to your bench vise. And you could run your blade through it. And based on where you suspected the bend to be, let's say you have a bend like this, you'd put one here, one here, and one here, and you just counteract the you just counteract it by tightening this. And you want to over travel you want to bend it slightly the other way, just a little bit and pull it back, and then test it again on a flat surface. And yeah, that'll basically do it. Alright guys. That's yeah, a bit of a mess. Um, oh, I forgot to show this one again. Sorry about that, the shadow. All right, thanks for watching, guys.